Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. And on this video, we are going to talk about the general overview of oncology nursing. By the way, thank you so much for those students who keep on recommending topics that I'm going to discuss. I appreciate your help. So on this video, we are going to talk about the overview of oncology nursing, wherein it is found in the medical surgical nursing. Basically, we are going to talk about cancer here. But what is cancer? Cancer is actually a disease characterized by DNA damage that causes abnormal cell growth. So in here, the damage is due to the transformation of the genetic mutation in the cellular DNA. So there is a genetic mutation in that cell that caused the damage. And that is where the cancer rooted. And here in cancer, the cells lost their normal growth controlling mechanism. So in order for us to easily understand the further topic, let us first define those terms that are being used in oncology nursing. And these are frequently used suffixes and prefixes. First is neo, that means new. Plasia, that means growth. Plasm, it's a substance. Trophy, that means size. Oma, that means tumor. Stasis, that means location. A, that is the absence or none. Ana, that means luck. Hyper, that means excessive or increase. Meta is change. This means bad or deranged or irregular. So these are the frequently used suffixes and prefixes in oncology nursing. There are other terms still in oncology nursing and these are not the only suffixes and prefixes to be used. But these are the frequently used ones. So to proceed in our topic, let's discuss what is carcinogenesis. And carcinogenesis means that this is the cancer development process. Some other books, they call this carcinogenesis as the pathophysiology of cancer because we have three stages here in the carcinogenesis and this is where the cancer rooted, okay? Or the development of cancer. Or it says here, it is actually the process. And we have three processes here and that is the initiation, promotion, and production. Aggression. Let's consider, if you will say carcinogenesis, that means it's already negative, okay? That is already the development of cancer cells in the body, okay? Here in initiation, this means that carcinogens escape normal enzymatic mechanisms and altered general structure of cellular DNA. So it means that there is already a damage and mutation to the DNA causing an excessive sound division due to the excessive oncogen function but decrease in suppressor gene function. So as mentioned here, there is already a escape, meaning to say there is already a derange from the normal function. It means that there is already a problem here that alters the general structure of the cell. Okay, so here in the initiation, this is where everything started. Let me get that car as an example. In a car, you have a gas, okay? And we will consider that gas as the oncogene. And of course, in that car, you have a brake. And let's consider that brake as a suppressor or a suppressor gene, okay? We mentioned earlier that here in the initiation, there is an excessive oncogene function but decrease in suppressor gene meaning to say there is no balance anymore okay so here in the initiation the balance of the oncogene and suppressor is no longer okay you got it so here for example in a car there is an increased gas meaning to say you can drive faster however your brake is already decreased and if your brake is already decreased you keep on moving and moving and moving and of course there is an increase in the oncogene but nothing thing balances the oncogene because the suppressor in this initiation phase is low okay so that means that if there is an increased gas but no break the oncogene function is getting crazy okay and there is no break that means there is also an increase in the development of cancer cells and that is in the initiation phase the second one is the promotion from the word promotion, it's promoting. That means there is a repeated exposure to promoting agents causes the expression of abnormal or mutant genetic information. In this stage, the mutated cells are exposed to promoters that enhance their growth. Here in the initiation earlier, in a car, there is no break, okay? The abnormal cells are increasing, okay? So here in the promotion, there is a certain factor that will promote their exposure. 
in order for this cell to become more abnormal. Okay, got it? So the next one is the progression. Here in the progression phase, there is actually an invasion or the cancer cells invade adjacent tissues and there is already a metastasis. There is already too much cells require additional mutation so the growth rate increases. That allows making metastasize basically spreading throughout the body and resistant already for therapy. So this tree shows the development of cancer and we call it the carcinoma. Genesis. The next one that we're going to discuss is the differences between the staging and grading. First, let's discuss the grading. Here in grading, this reflects how abnormal cells look under the microscope. And it is where we are going to classify the tumor cells. In this phase, it is where to define the type of tissue from which the tumor really originated and the degree to which the tumor cells retain and functional and histological characteristics of the tissue origin. So to summarize it, in grading, we are going to classify the tumor cells and we are also looking where the tumor originated and its degree to retain its functional and histological characteristics. To further discuss the grading, in cancer, cell becomes deregulated and proliferate abnormal, which is called the dysplasia. And when dysplasia keeps on developing, the cancer cells lose features on the tissue origin and becomes less and less differentiated. Okay? So if there is already a problem with the cell, of course the body will go into less differentiate it. So if there is an increase in the abnormal cells, Basically, the body will not going to differentiate it from the other cells because they keep on growing and they are already increased in the body. There is already a less differentiation of the cancer cells. Okay, I hope grading is clear. But here in the grading, there is a necessary that the cell must be determined or must be checked under the microscope in order for the doctors or in order for the clinicians to classify it. Okay? So the next one is the staging. Here in the staging, we are actually talking about the degree of spread. We are going to determine the size of the tumor and the existence of local invasion and its distant metastasis. Once the clinicians will go in to determine the size of the tumor, that result will be used to examine the patient and of course, they will use that to give a proper test and treatment, okay? There are also other purposes of this staging, and these are CTERS. C, it gives the healthcare providers common language to describe the severity of the cancer. Letter T, there is a treatment guide for the healthcare provider since they already know the size of the tumor and its local invasion. E, this is actually the estimated prognosis. The staging allows the healthcare provider to estimate the prognosis of the disease. R, it allows a comparison of results over time. And S, it allows for standardized clinical trials. So, CTERS, Common Language, Treatment Guide, Estimated Prognosis, Results Comparison Over Time, and Standardized Clinical Trials. And these are the purposes of staging. Just remember that here in the staging, the clinicians are going going to check for the size of the tumor already in order for them to give the patient a proper treatment. Here in the staging, there are different types of tests being done and that depends on the type of cancer that the patient have and we can classify it according to clinical or pathological. Here in the clinical, we can do physical examinations, laboratory tests, radiological examination, and diagnostic imaging. In here, we can do some CT scan to the patient, MRI, PAN-CT, and all other tests that can help us in checking the stage of that certain cancer. Meanwhile, here in the pathological, we are going to check some surgical reports. For example, if the patient went for surgery and they remove some tissues in that patient's body, we can use it for biopsy and diagnose the stage of that cancer. Most of the clinicians are using the TNM system. The TNM system is the most common that being used by the doctors actually. And here in the TNM system, we have the mnemonics TNM. T stands for tumor growth and for presence or malignancy of regional lymph nodes or we call it as the nodal. M stands for the extent of metastasis or metastasis. So T for tumor, N for nodal, M for metastasis. 
To further discuss the T and M, here in the T or the local tumor growth, T0, that means no tumor. 0, no. TIS, carcinoma in situ. Remember, TIS, in situ. Remove the T, get the IS, that means in situ. Okay? And the last one, T1, T2, T3, T4, these actually represent the size and extent of the primary local tumor. Remember that here in the T, we are actually looking for the tumor more spread or the tumor extent. Okay? T0, no TIS in C2, 1, T1, 2, 3, 4, size and extent. Meanwhile, here in the end, that is actually nodal or we are speaking about the lymph nodes, the presence or malignancy of regional lymph nodes, nodal. So N0, no nodal malignancy and N1, N2, N3, that is degree of increasing lymph node involvement. Remember that here in N, we are speaking about lymph nodes or lymphatic spread of cancer cells, okay? The last one is the M. It is where we are going to study the extent of the metastasis. And we also have the M0, that means no metastasis, M1 and M2, wherein they represent the type or location of metastasis. Remember, if we say metastasis, we are speaking about location, okay? Location, where does the spread of this cancer already? We are speaking about location, okay? Don't forget it. Here in the T, that is the tumor growth and nodal growth, okay? The extent of the lymphatic spread. And the last one, metastasis, that is the location. I hope it's clear. To convert in the Roman numeral stage, we have stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, and stage 4. Remember that in stage 1, there is no nodes and no metastasis. That means that the cancer is still curable. Unfortunately, in stage 4, there is already a presence of metastasis and advanced nodal stage. That's why the spread to other organs is already incurable. The last one that we're going to discuss here in the overview are the signs and symptoms. And we have the mnemonics, caution us. Always remember caution us, that stands for change in the bowel and bladder habits, a sore that does not heal, unusual bleeding or discharge, thickening of lump, indigestion, obvious change in wart or mole, nagging cough or hoarseness of voice, unexplained anemia, and sudden weight loss. Remember also that the gold standard in the diagnosing of cancer is biopsy. And there are other complications of this cancer disease, but we are going to discuss this on the next videos. So I guess that's all for this video. I hope you gained knowledge in the general overview of oncology nursing. There are still other topics that I'm going to share here in this topic in oncology nursing. So keep on subscribing and might as well click that notification bell so you're going to be updated on the reviews that I'm going to share. Don't forget to check the other videos that I have on this channel. Maybe they can help you. If you guys need some help again in nursing topics or if you have some difficulties in nursing, you can comment your problem down below and maybe I can help you. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.